Let's talk about the specs you need for a graphic design and Photoshop based computer. I say Photoshop because that is the primary powerhouse program that graphic designers are going to use. While some of you might be using Illustrator or even Corel products, Photoshop is a really good benchmark for the performance of a machine irregardless. So that's the benchmark that we're going to be using. So if I say Photoshop, just understand that that's where I'm coming from. So Photoshop is an extremely RAM intensive and processor intensive program. So what I'm going to recommend in terms of specs is that you look for 16 gigabytes of RAM. Whether you're building or buying, I think that 16 gigabytes of RAM is a very healthy place to start for Photoshop and will give you plenty of room. As a bare minimum, don't go below eight. I mentioned this in my best laptops for graphic design video. If you are planning to get a laptop, I highly recommend you check that out. And even though it's a 2014 video, it's still very relevant. And I have updated the links in the description with newer models, so don't worry about that. But again, eight is your base, 16 gigs is optimal. In most cases, you won't need anything more than that. One of the big misconceptions before I go back to processors is whether you need a graphics card or a GPU, aka a video card. And the thing is the onboard video in most cases is going to be just fine. Just because it's graphic design in Photoshop doesn't mean that it needs this great big intense video card from Nvidia or AMD or whoever. The, the point is that most of the features in Photoshop don't take advantage of it. If you're not doing advanced photo manipulation and using the liquify tool and all kinds of stuff like that, then you're really not gonna utilize it as much. There are GPU accelerated features in Photoshop, but again, most of you aren't using those, so it's not gonna play an issue. I would say GPU is probably gonna be relevant to maybe less than 20% of overall Photoshop users. And you know that's just my take on it based on how people utilize Photoshop. And I think that it's overkill to get a computer just based on that or to spend a lot of money on a graphics card. Now, if you're gonna be doing video editing, whether you're using Photoshop or Premiere Pro for that, or After Effects, that becomes a whole nother story. I'll cover that in a different video, focusing on the graphics card stuff. But understand that if you have Intel-based graphics or AMD-based graphics built into the motherboard, that you don't have to worry about another video card. Now, going to motherboards and processors, you don't have to worry about motherboards as much. We'll talk about that in the later parts of the video where I get in specific components and I recommend brands and things like that. The thing you need to worry about with a motherboard if you're building a computer is how much RAM it can take. We already talked about how RAM intensive Photoshop is. So you need a motherboard that can support RAM upgrades in the future to maybe 32 gigs so you can max out there. And if you're feeling really ambitious, maybe 64. That's gonna get expensive, but if you start with that from the very beginning, it means you have room to grow and you have options later. The other thing is you wanna worry about socket sets. I'm not gonna get into the technical jargon of those socket sets, except to say this, that if you get something that's supporting an i5, you really need to find out if it can support an i7 later. And I highly recommend you use something like PC Parts Picker to help you figure those kinds of things out if you're a newbie to this. But understand that it's better to start with the highest processor you can afford at the time and then you know get upgrades as new technology comes out. But again, if you get something solid, it will last you for years and you won't have to worry about the upgrades. The idea here is this is supposed to last you five years or more regardless of whether you do any upgrades or not. For processors, if a budget is an issue, you can get away with an i3 Intel processor, but I recommend going with an i5. Um, and I recommend if you absolutely can afford it, go with an i7. In terms of the processor speeds, you know, as high as you can go, but just understand that anything over 2.5, 2.8 is probably overkill for the most part if we're talking about Photoshop. There are other programs that utilize it more like Premiere Pro and After Effects, but for Photoshop, you don't necessarily need to go that fine. Anything that's over two cores and is over 2.2, 2.4 is healthy and you'll be fine. If you can go quad core, if you can go octa core, great. Um, in my experience, two to four processing threads is sufficient for most Photoshop work. Most of you are not working over 50 layers. If you are, um, and I can do that sometimes, then bigger processors will play a role. So will RAM, but for the most part, you can get away with i3, i5, i7. I recommend i5 really as a minimum base for me personally. So that's what I would go with. I don't want to get into an Intel versus AMD thing. I will say that the higher brands, uh, your Dells, your um, Macs, they use the Intel processors 
and in my experience that works better for Photoshop. I know you can do very awesome stuff cheaper with gaming on the AMD processors, but for stuff like Photoshop and the Adobe programs, Intel just works better overall. So that's my experience. I've had both and that's what I'm gonna recommend here. In terms of specking out hard drives, I recommend that you go with a minimum of two hard drives. And the reason is this, that when you are talking about the performance of an app and a program and it's competing for resources, you gotta think of it like lanes on a highway. So I'd rather have my operating system and my apps on the fastest thing they could be on so I would get an SSD hard drive if I were you. And then for all of your files and your source materials and your data, you would put that on a separate drive and that would be your data drive. So you'll have you know, an application layer that also has the OS and then your data layer. And that's two if you're going cheap. If we're going the more expensive route, which I'll talk about, then I would recommend anywhere from a four to six drive configuration. And I'll talk about that later on when we get into like my actual build outs for the high end. In terms of hard drive speeds, again, get the best SSD you can in terms of a regular traditional HDD, then I would say get 7200 RPMs. Those are gonna be your better hard drives. I will recommend brands a little later, but that's what I would go with in terms of the space or the capacity. I would say for your um, SSD that's gonna have all your applications, and is gonna have your operating system that you go with a 120 gig. Um, and then for your data, I would say go, you know, either 512 gigabytes or a terabyte, you know, whatever you can get in that neighborhood. If you can get that in an SSD, great. If you gotta get in a traditional hard drive, go with the 7200 RPMs and do that. That's gonna cost you on the SSD side, maybe 150, 160. I'll have links and prices in the description below. For the hard drive side, you're not gonna be paying that much. It's probably gonna be under $100 even if you go to a good brand like Western Digital or Seagate. Add a terabyte, two terabytes, you'll be fine. If you're gonna get a graphics card and you are gonna go on the high end, then go as high as you possibly can and don't look at the memory limit and the RAM for that. Look at the uh, memory limit interface, the bits. You know, Look at that bandwidth, look at things like that, look at the clock speed look at those things and get an either a 256 bit card or higher and that's going to be the better video card i will cover video cards exclusively in a different video but remember that for photoshop and graphic design work they don't play as important a role so you don't even need that you can use the onboard video but but remember try and get the best that you can for the price and if you have to go to the low end still try and get like an ati radeon or an nvidia or an amd whatever so again, those are my thoughts in terms of your raw specs for a Photoshop or graphic design build. Again, if you have comments, reach out to me through the comment section of the video, or you can ask me your questions directly on Twitter, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it very helpful and informative. Um, I hope it wasn't too technically overwhelming for you or boring. If it was, I apologize. You can read more in depth if you would like to at my blog, robertoblake.com slash blog, just look for the article, Building the Ultimate Photoshop Computer 2015. For those of you who are looking for the budget version of that, it is coming soon. I will probably have it up this week, just pending some final things that I'm putting together on it. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.